Let's jump right into uh, a little bit more about these tables. Of course, what's the whole point of having a table? The main reason to have a table is that it presents complicated ideas quickly and easily. And especially think about it this way. If I'm reading your research and I'm getting to the end of your research and I'm reading your conclusion or your discussion, it would be easy for me to go back and look at a table, like table two or table three or table one, and understand the ideas you're talking about, rather than I have to go back and read the whole paper again. Because, of course, research can be very complicated and very dense. So it's helpful to have tables convey information quickly. Also, another reason to have tables is mathematically or for statistics to help the user be able to run some numbers themselves. They can actually check some numbers or add up some numbers differently and find out a different kind of idea or be double checking your idea in a way. So it allows them to check things and maybe generate some more information themselves. Let's jump into the parts of a table. Now here we have the APA guideline to, uh, for what a table looks like. And all I can say is this has got to be the most complicated table I've seen because it includes all the possibilities of what you can do in a table. I'm sure there's more combinations, but here are the basic pieces to a table. So look at it with me over here. What we have is the table number up top here, table X, and then we have the table title, so the title of the table. Now, of course, when you're writing your research paper or your thesis, you may be used to just saying um, table one period, and then you go ahead and you write the caption. The caption is not the same idea as the title. The caption is what's going in inside the journal as you have the reading flow. But APA is actually asking you to be more formal. They're asking for a table title. And as you can see here, it's not in line with the number. Up here is table X, that's like table one. And down here is a table title. So when would you use it this way? When would you do it this way? Well, this actually is common for many journals, especially high quality journals, that they request that your tables and figures be separate from your main body of your file. And so you'll be writing your paper and you, if you have a table you will say put place table about here. And then you have the table in a separate page at the back of the paper or in another file depending on the journal's requirements. So this means that it's a little bit different, a little bit special. And I would say this is the most formal approach. So we have a title, and you can see the title here, we're gonna go over some examples in a minute, it is all capital letters, just like the title of a paper. You title it in the same way. Now, what we have here is, down here is the body of the table, but you can see we have a number of columns. These columns are interest, inter, interestingly here, you can see, combining together. So here we have boys and girls, and we divide them into the subgroups of boys with and boys without, girls with and girls without, and then a grade because girls and boys have a grade, right? What grade are they in? So in the third grade, girls, and in the third grade, boys, and then in the third grade, girls with, and in the third grade, girls without, so you can see that it's becoming you know, complicated, but once you get following it, it's not that hard. And then here we have a wave one and a wave two. So we're actually repeating the same design twice in the table because it's kind of a pre-test and a post-test kind of situation. So let's look at these names very quickly. Girls and boys, this is called a column spanner because it's going across columns. So we have a column here, and we have a column here. We're crossing columns, so this bit is called a spanner, a column spanner. Here we have the one level and then a second level. So this, putting two levels together this way, is called decked heads, decked, D-E-C-K, like a deck, like a deck of cards, or decks on a bus, or decks on a ship different levels. And then we have a stub, and the stub is this heading here, it's just called a stub, 
and that identifies this leftmost column. It's saying this is what this represents. And then down here you can see these stubs or stub columns because we've got their grades levels, right? These are called stubs also. A little bit confusing. And then down here we have this overall spanner. It's called a table spanner because it's actually going across the whole table. It's the title of going all the way across. It represents all those columns. So all these columns here are wave one. All these columns here are wave two. But each of the columns is different information because some are girls, some are boys, some are with, some are without, and then there are different grades too, right? Okay, so that's some of the basic vocabulary. Inside the table, any space inside the table is called a cell. So this is a cell. Down here, 189, that's another cell. Okay, and then we come down to the bottom, and here we're saying table body, which really is anything inside the table we can call the table body. These rows that are inside the table can be called the body. Down at the bottom of the table is the note area, so you can see the word note here. If you have any special notes, you put them down here at the bottom. We're going to cover that in a second.